no good. Um, this is it. This is the last show of the 2019 edition of Noir City. I want to thank everybody. I want to thank, really, I want to thank everybody uh, at SIF who has been so fantastic. Uh, Harley, Meg, everybody, Stan, Sarah Wilkie, Beth Barrett, every, everybody. Uh, this is really the most fun I have on the road, uh, doing this festival. Uh, the, the people are great, you guys are a terrific audience. I, I sincerely mean it when I say it's very special to look out into the crowd and see like the same people in the same seats all the time. You guys are the best, you know. The loyalists, it is greatly appreciated. Uh, and it, it, I do feel kind of sad, that, like it's over. This is the last move, you know. But we're going to go out with a bang. Trust me, we're going to go out with a bang. Um, we do have a donation drive winner for today. And I thank you all uh, for your donations to the Film Noir Foundation this week. And uh, we're, we shipped up 10 boxes of merchandise for this festival, and we're barely sending one back home. So Woo! I really appreciate that. And, uh, and uh, we probably, we definitely took in many more donations for the Film Noir Foundation up here than we did in San Francisco. So it is greatly, greatly appreciated. We, we, we love you guys. Uh, the winner of the donation drive, and you're getting, uh, don't be shocked when I say this, you're getting a comics uh, collection called Master Race, uh, which is what you think it is. Uh, but it is a, a collection of stories by a man, uh, an artist named Bernie Krigstein, who worked for EC Comics in the 1950s. It was one of the most innovative geniuses of comic art ever. Uh, and his short story, Master Race, is one of the masterpieces of comic book art. And it is the title story in this collection. So, uh, Virginia Dolan, Yay! you who are the, the winner of the Revolution Drive, and you will be collect um, from Darl out at the table um, that fantastic collection of Bernie Krigstein's work. Okay, now we're going to do, uh, I, have, I have a contestant already picked out. Uh, so, Mary, you're not getting away. Mary Fields, please come up here onto the stage because you are going to be our final contestant on Name That Noir. We'll see, we'll see. I, I really enjoyed talking to Mary this week. Uh, she's been terrific. You've come to many, many of the shows this week. Um, well, tell, tell these folks who you are, and I love your hat. <laughs> Okay, I'm Mary Fields, and my hat was designed by Adrian for Claudette Colbert to wear in some movie, but I don't know which movie, so if you ever see it, please tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so you have your work cut out for you. You get to tell Mary which film her hat yeah, appeared in. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, are you ready for this? Yeah. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm throwing a curve into this because normally I've been doing questions based on the movie that you just saw. But now I'm doing it based on the movie that we are about to see. So, are you ready? Robert Ryan, the star of Odds Against Tomorrow, was one of the highest profile liberals in Hollywood during the 1950s. Ironic, given that his forte was playing bigoted villains in a number of movies, starting with a powerful noir film from 1947, about a murderous anti-Semite. Can you <laughs> name that war? I know this. Uh, that's what everybody <laughs> says, Mary. I hate to tell you. Okay, um, you know this. Tell me but, who else was in it. Well, it's it's a movie that's famous for starring three actors, all with the first name Robert. It's the movie that stars the. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, well, uh, there, you're halfway home now. Crossfire? Crossfire is correct! <laughs> you win, Mary. I, I just have to share this. 
one of the things I love about doing these festivals is I meet really cool people. And I've loved meeting Mary this week, and I've been trying to bait her to come up here on stage, because she totally surprised me when I said, come up on stage and you'll win like a graphic novel. And she says, you know, I'm working on my own graphic novel. And, and then she shows me on her phone pages from her graphic novel that are absolutely stunning. And it's, it's just fantastic. And then I learned you're like a muralist, and you do all the, you know, you're just fabulous. <laughs> so, so thank you so much for, uh, for being an entertaining part of our, the show and coming to all the festivals. You're great. Yeah, you, you win uh, the Bill Maher Foundation's restoration on Blu-ray of The Man Who Cheated Himself uh, from Flicker Alley and the Film Noir Foundation. Enjoy. Okay, well, thank you. you're about to see. A lot of people uh, say this is maybe the movie that brings down the curtain on the classic noir era. Uh, like, I, you know, when I introduced uh, Touch of Evil, I explained to you why people think that's the one, because Citizen Kane and Touch of Evil make such sweet bookends. Uh, obviously, a lot of people think that this is the one that brings down the curtain, because there's just something about the ending of this movie that makes it feel right uh, for ending that whole era. But there's an amazing backstory to this film. There is a man named William McGivern, who was a novelist in the primarily in the 1950s, who was one of the preeminent crime fiction writers of the era. He's the guy who wrote the book The Big Sleep. He wrote uh, Hell on Frisco Bay, Shield for Murder, Road Cop, and he wrote the novel Odds Against Tomorrow. Um, the novel was purchased by Harry Belafonte who thought that this would make a great film because he wanted to not just be a movie actor, he wanted to be a movie maker and a film producer. So you will see the credit on this film uh, that this is a Harbell production, and that is Harry Belafonte. But it does not say produced by Harry Belafonte because in 1959 you didn't really do that if you were a black man. Uh, there were just parts of the United States where they were going to reject the film outright if it was actually produced by a black man. But he, he read this novel and he said, you know, this is the kind of story that we can actually do something with and make a statement about the state of race relations in the United States. Now, obviously, the year before this movie was released, there was a big hit with Sidney Poitier and Tony Curtis called The Defiant Ones which Harry Belafonte thought was a little too sentimental in the way it handled these issues, right? Uh, and the book, Odds Against Tomorrow, suffered from kind of the same thing. It was very, very tough, but in the second half of the novel, things kind of turn that defiant one's way where the guys start to see each other as human beings and all this stuff. And Harry Belafonte had something entirely different in mind. So, he took this novel and he went to a very unexpected writer, Abraham Polanski, who had been, who was one of the Hollywood Ten and had been blacklisted and had not really worked in years. So not only was Belafonte being defiant in the sense of, oh, I'm a black man, I'm going to make this movie, but I'm going to hire this blacklisted writer to write the screenplay. So he gave the book to Abe Polanski and, get, and said two words to him, fix it. <laughs> and that is exactly what Abe Polanski did. He knew exactly what Belafonte meant. He wanted something much harder, rougher, and tougher to really slap people in the face. And because this was a crime film and not, on the surface, a message movie, they were able to get this film made. When Harry Belafonte approached Robert Wise, who was really, like, top of the line, this point. He had just made I Want to Live with Susan Hayward. She won an Oscar for that. Uh, he had yet to make Sound of Music and West Side Story, uh, but Robert Wise uh, was approached to direct the film, and when Belafonte told him Abe Polanski is actually writing the screenplay, uh, Robert Wise said, great. Uh, he was very much opposed to the blacklist, and he wanted to do this as like a this whole film was made like a guerrilla effort, very clandestine. They kept the, the secret that Polanski was involved. Nobody knew, for decades, nobody knew that A. Polanski wrote this script. 
The front was a guy uh, named John O. Killens, who was a young black novelist that Belafonte wanted to give a break to, so he put his name on the film, even though John Killens didn't really write any of the screenplay. Uh, this is Abe Polanski from start to finish, and it's an astounding screenplay. Everything that's in the movie is right there in the script. The other thing that is extraordinary about this film, besides the remarkable cast, Robert Ryan is incredible in this movie, uh, Ed Bagley, who you saw on The Turning Point last Saturday night, gives a tremendous performance in this film. Uh, and there's look for a very young Cicely Tyson working at the bar, in the club. I mean, everybody is great in this movie. But what really sets it apart is there is a very uh, amazing score uh, by John Lewis and the Modern Jazz Quartet. They didn't really do scores like this in the 1950s until Otto Preminger got Duke Ellington to do the score uh, for Anatomy of a Murder, and Harry Belafonte got John Lewis and the Modern Jazz Quartet to do this score, which is absolutely sensational. Um, Joseph Brun did the cinematography, which is remarkable. There's a lot of infrared photography in the film that gives a very desolate and, and bleak uh, look to the Hudson Valley when they go upstate for this bank robbery. Uh, all in all, it is a remarkable film. The, the masterful French director Jean-Pierre Melville, who has made some of the greatest heist films of all time, this is his favorite movie of all time. Uh, this is what really inspired him to make all those caper movies that he became known for. Uh, I'm just I'm happy to, to show this as the concluding film. This is the way you go out with a bang. Uh, and as I always do, I have to ask, how many folks in the house have not seen this movie before? This is your first, oh, I'm loving this. This is so great. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that this is your first exposure to what really is one of the great noir films ever made. So thank you, Seattle. It has been fantastic.